I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, we have an elite swimming peer. This guy's career fell over the same years as mine. We, we, we're, we're, we're living parallel lives, except I didn't go to the 1990 Commonwealth Games, but I did go to the 1991 World Championships, 92 Olympic Games. Let's take a step back, 1991 Pan Pacific Games, back when they were the Pan Pacific Games. Yep. Today, we have Simon Percy, Vice President, Malmston, Inc. How you doing, buddy? Great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Mel. Just a tiny, this is a tiny sliver of your bio. This does not represent you at all. You're you're really an aquatics renaissance man, um, <laughs> coach, former elite swimmer, and right now I feel like you're at the epicenter of swimming globally. Certainly, elite swimming globally as an ASU alum, former coach. Um, you know, and you're also you're part of the crew that 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 came back and created the endowment and brought the team back to ASU it, that's the, you've got, you got to feel proud right now. Yeah. You know, I occupied a unique space when that happened in May this, this time, essentially 2008, I was on the staff um, and being an alumni, I sort of sort of sat in that little spot that was able to communicate and, and kind of direct and, and help things move in the right direction, uh, right place, right time sort of situation. So I knew all the alumni, I knew all the players in the athletic department and what was what was happening. So it was a I think a fortunate fortunate thing to be there at that time. It's and it's it's a great location. It's the right location for swim. And uh I didn't see the vision and but I mean I we, obviously we followed this. Um but it's an ongoing evolving story of success as, as, as you know, we're, we're recording this right now. You're, we're going to go live in about five days. But today, the I think the top the top story on on Swim Swim right now is that Leon Marchand is going to commit to another year at ASU. Yep, yep. that makes us all all the alumni very happy. It's uh, you know he, he's such an so um, I went to NC Toys to watch um, this year, and, and I've been other years as well. But obviously, I felt like hey, we we got a real shot. Um, this year, I knew I knew we would finish high, but I thought if everything went perfect, then we got a shot, right? And I want to be there for that because um, I was there for the lowest moments as well, right? So you know, um, but Leon's family came out. Uh, there was a, a, a large number of French supporters in there. They were having a blast in the stands. The parents were all having a blast. There was a good number of alumni there. Um, NC Toys a fun meet to be at anyway, but to see. Uh, he's a nice kid and, and he really deserves all the success he has. Um, you know, he's an amazing swimmer. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's wonderful to watch. It's, it's great for the sport as well. You, you never I, know quite what he's going to do and what sport and what, what events are you going to swim? I, I don't know, whatever he likes, whatever he wants to swim, I imagine is what he's going to swim. So. Yeah, the ability to, to rip a 50 in a relay. And and go all the way up to the 400 IM is 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 dumb. We haven't seen this kind of range in talent. I don't think ever. I think this is a unique situation, and um, it's pretty exciting to watch. You yep. were an IMer and a backstroker, mm -hmm. and uh, at one point in time, you had the fourth. Uh, you were on the all-time list at ASU in the 200 back, fifth in the 200 IM, and eighth in the 400 IM. I'm guessing that might not be the case now. I don't think I'm. I think the line of where top ten is is so far away from where I was in the day. I mean, uh, yeah, I was a good swimmer in the day, but I, I in the four hundred I am, and and I, that wasn't really my event. I was okay at it, but it was a long way for a guy my size. Um, and Leon would have been finishing. I would have just turned for the last fifty of the four hundred, and he would have been finishing. That's how far apart we were, and and I was, you know, top ten guy. I I, uh, I scored at NC twice in the four hundred IM. Um, yeah, it's just a different, it's a different thing. It's a, it's basically a sprint now, you know, <laughs> four four legs of a sprint, right? Uh, you 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 saved ASU. You're part of the team that saved ASU. 
Now we're having all this success. No, and no then, one person deserves credit for that. It was a big group of people that put a lot of work in for a lot of time. It, it's, uh, but this is pushing, this is pushing it off the all time board. I don't know. The, life is complicated. Couldn't, couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier to be off the all time board for, for those reasons. If, if there's something wrong. So we actually just got rid of the oldest record this year. Um, Scott Brackett had the record for the 19, 1986,000 which is, isn't really ever swam in a, a taper me anymore, but that, that got off the record. That was, that was a good one to see disappear. But, yeah, the records need to go down. They, they need to go down. Otherwise, the sport's not progressing. What's funny is we, I, I think that we're, we, as we get older and we're proud of the times we went, but it's, it, they really do matter less and less, and we just get caught up in the awe of what young talent's doing now in ASU. It really is. It's really the epicenter of elite swimming right now on the planet. And that's, that, that's got to be exciting. And it's got to be exciting because it's a, you know, you have such deep roots in the sport. Um, I asked you before we, we we started about your coaching. And, I, you know, I'm always, I, I feel like when people start coaching, it's like they get, they get the virus, they get the bug, they can't get rid of it. Yeah. Um, just let our listeners know what you're doing right now on deck. Uh, so I run a, a program uh, out of Arizona called Swim Duo Masters. It's mostly out of ASU, also up in the city of Scottsdale. And I, I coach there three, four times a week. Uh, I let somebody else, it's my program, but I let somebody else run the head coach. But it's really my recreation time being around athletes that want to be there, that are having a great time, that are, that are engaged in lifetime fitness, essentially what is what I'm trying to achieve for these people is, is give them somewhere that they love to come to. That's I, I maintain this is true for masters in particular. This might be the, if their hour in the pool might be the only thing they do for themselves all day long. Let's make it great, right? Let, let's make it fun. Let's make it a good workout. Let's have them leave knowing that they got a good workout in, but they, they, they enjoyed the people that were there around. If they showed up 10 minutes late, who cares if they have to get out 10 minutes early, We'll see you next time. You know, no pro no problem, right? Like this, that's what we need to create for for masters. You know, obviously, age group and everything else is different, but that's that's what I'm trying to achieve for for the adults. But the adults occupy a larger portion of your life in swimming, right? Like that is it's a very small time that we get to be great. <laughs> now we're just remembering the dream and then trying to trying to stay as healthy as we can, right? I've never heard anybody put it exactly the way you did it, and, and it makes absolute sense. Which is that this is this this one moment in the pool that with the masters workout is that one thing you do for yourself, and uh, it's vital, man. Master swimmers are a different breed. There, it's you 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 want to, you want the fountain of youth. Nobody's yeah. ever figured it out, but it's I, I think it might be master swimming. Yeah. I don't want it to be a different breed. I want it to be the breed. You know, like. It's it, it's the sport that you get to do until your last day. You have to give up running eventually. Too hard on the body. It seems to me that a lot of people get hurt on the bicycle one way or the other. So swimming is a sport that you get to do, and it's such a great overall part of your life. Um, and and I'm just there to help facilitate, make it be fun. You know, I'm going to give you a good workout. You're going to know. <laughs> you're going to know you worked, but uh, I want you to enjoy that process too. So you, you're. So you've got it all: elite swimming, coaching. Uh, you know your your history with AH, ASU, which is which is uh, it, admirable. And uh, but now VP at uh, Mountain Inc. And that's this this is this is one of the storied companies in swimming. A lot of people don't think about the the, the backbone of our sport, and and you you take things for granted. But uh, this is an impressive company. Um, Mountain is a world leader in aquatics, designing and producing high end equipment and functionality. Uh, with functionality, durability, and the environment in focus. Um, if you're listening right now, you can, you can pause it. You might want to pop over and check out their website. Certainly go to um, mountainston.com forward slash en dash us forward slash. That's uh, it's. I want to put that that in our show notes, and and you should and you should check them out. But Mountainston has been producing products for a very, very long time, all the way back to back to the the origin story with the Swedish goggles. How did you end up at the company? Um, so I think like most people in the US, the only, uh, I, I didn't really even recognize the brand Malmsten. Um, it hasn't had a presence in the US as a, as a company really since uh, until 2021. 
then my business partner, Mikhail Horn, um, asked me out to grab a drink and dinner. And, and uh, I knew he had retired from his previous career at IBM. And and I figured we were just going to hang out because he was a big part of bringing ASU swimming back as well. He was he, He's ASU Hall of Fame. Um, and he was he was a pivotal person involved in that process. So, if Mike asks you to dinner, you go to dinner with with Mike. But he's also a fun guy to have a beer with too. If you ever get the opportunity to do that, um, so so he tells me about what he's what he's planning, what the plans are, and uh, he asked me, he said, you know, would you be interested in in helping me run this? I'm planning on being semi-retired, so you know, you would be running it. You would be you know there and let me do twenty hours a week. And I told him no. <laughs> so I was, I had actually just started a different business venture altogether. Um, and, uh, and that was, you know, f- front and foremost for me at the time, but boy, he put a little uh, earworm in and and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And about a week later, um, I called him back up and said, no, I think maybe I am interested. Let's talk a little bit more. So, um, but once he explained the company and said, you know, have you ever heard of Swedish goggles? Yeah, that's what I swam with. Um, our era, I think Swedish goggles were probably the predominant goggle. Most people were wearing that. Um, some people it just didn't work for. That's OK. Um, but that's what I wore. Um, they were they were great goggles. So I knew I knew Swedish goggles. Didn't know that the company that made them was Malmsten um, and that they do pretty much everything else that goes into a pool as well. It's it's an important company. Uh, Long term relationships depended on by World Aquatics, and it's. Uh, but I, th- I think most athletes do. We we take line lines for granted until we're in, until you're laying on them, or yep. or, or, or into, <laughs> But it's a uh, it, it's it's something that that it's. It, I certainly think about it now as an adult. But uh, and, and in terms of just the the investment that 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 clubs make. It's uh, as colleges make. Um, it's an important one, and it's one that's vital. You have to have it. Uh, I, I know that Malmston is. Um, I know that that sustainability is 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 a big part of of of, of the con- the company's ethos. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that today, if that's okay. Yeah. It's really it's it's. I, I wonder if. If, if people in our community, because we have, we have a lot of people, a lot of diverse opinions, but I always wonder what motivates people. And it's, um, you know, the big question is, you know, c- can you, can you have sustainability and can it impact the bottom line economically? Is it, can it be a, can it be a value to whoever is investing in these landlines? That's a, yeah. that's, that's my first question. That's a great question. Um, so we actually spent the better past of last summer. We had a couple of interns come in from Thunderbird uh, School of International Management and um, help us out. And so we sort of uh, evolved into this part of the process and we took on sustainability. Um, as a matter of interest, we had the reason that this happened, we just delivered a brand new set of lane lines to ASU Monopolmer Aquatic Center. Um, and that's a big facility. and we were taking out the old ones and it sort of struck me uh all it's a truckload it's a full truckload of of lane lines that also means there's a full truckload of plastic about to end up in a landfill somewhere unless we can find something else to do with this and that was a pretty you know that was a it struck me we need to we need to figure this out what can we do so we we grabbed the interns and we started the project so how can we break down the lane line at the end of the day, once it's had its first life, what can we do with it? Um, and yes, you can make it somewhat economic. It, it's not going to pay for itself, obviously. There's a diminished value after something's been used, clearly. But uh, the wire that strings the lane lines together has a real value to it. You can take that in and recycle it, and that has that has money back. It's not a ton of money, but it's, it's money. And if you multiply that across a big pool, it's a, it's a lot more money. <laughs> Um, if you buy a quality product, then you can reuse the springs and the take-up reels, and that will co- that will end up costing you less on your replacement because you're essentially just replacing the wire and the discs at that point. So, th- and that that's a real savings uh, per lane line that that will make a difference. So, um, you know, there's other things that you can do with the discs to donate them on 
uh, and potentially, depending on your accountant or, or the, the tax rules, and I wouldn't tell anyone to do anything wrong, but potentially there's value in terms of a tax deduction for the disc if you donate them onto a school so that they can be used in different projects that a school might want to use them in. Um, there's real money that, that can be associated with that. Um, you know, some people are less concerned about a tax deduction. If you're a city, perhaps that tax deduction, you know, the pool is probably not making money anyway. So the tax deduction may not be a, a value, but there are circumstances where that would help. So, yeah, you can approach the environmental question from an economic perspective. And if it's economically viable, our perspective is that that is much more likely to happen than if it's just a good thing to do. Most of us think about lane lines, and I certainly think about them because I, I think I've taken them in and, and you know put them in and taken them out 500 times over my lifetime. But I think back to little Melvin at 12 years old, pulling out the lane lines and just beating them to death, just you know, just and doing as fast as you can because you know this is just a chore you have to do. Yeah, get them out, um, get them out, <laughs> get them out, get them out. But it's. uh you know, it, it makes me think. You know, does you know quality has to matter? These things have to have to have to last. How yeah. does quality affect sustainability? Sustainability. So when you when you purchase a quality product, it tends to have more value at the end of the day. So a, 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 an example of that might be a vehicle you buy. If you're buying a BMW new, the chances that that BMW is going to a last you longer. Is, is great than if you buy a Toyota Corolla, although I do see some some old Toyota Corollas on the road. Um, and I'm not knocking a Toyota, but, you know, the BMW is going to last. But when, if you wanted to sell it, it's going to be worth more at the end of the day as well because it started off with high value, higher quality parts, et cetera, going into it. it. It's not different with a lane line. The higher the quality of the materials, the better value you have at the end of the day. So to be specific to our product, um, we use a, a high grade stainless steel. We use 316L, which is marine grade stainless steel, and it's a four millimeter wire. Going into the reeds a little bit with that, but that's more steel than anybody else uses, which does a couple of things. It makes the lane line stronger. So our lane lines don't break. You can put a bunch of people on the lane line. And in fact, under a stress test, when, when it's put under a stress test under circumstances that would never happen, the S hook at the end is going to bend before the wire is going to break. So it's, the lane line is going to last you longer. You're going to have to re, you know, purchase less frequently. And the pool manager is not going to be after the guy that's picking up 400 discs out of the pool. I don't know if you've ever done that, but no one likes that very much either. So, so it will last longer, but that think that product that went into it is worth more at the end of the day as well. So when it is done as a, as a swimming lane line, the recycler is more interested in a pure stainless steel wire than that's four millimeters thick than one that's about two and a half millimeters thick with plastic on the outside of it. So it's just worth more money. Same goes true for the spring. Same goes true for the take up reel. The plastic, uh, we are very invested in um, making sure that the color fasteners that go into the plastic but the antioxidants that go into the plastic and the colorant itself, all, all those components that go in, uh, we're on top of what's the latest and greatest that's going to help it uh, survive better, uh, perform better, um, so that the, the, the plastic won't have to be replaced quite as frequently. Is it, um, is, are we talking uh, Malmsten R&D? Is this... Uh, is well, this yeah, so, so Malmsten itself doesn't, make the make the colorants that go into it or the or the um the additives that go into the color that help extend its life but we work closely with the companies that do and and invest in making sure that we know what is in there um making sure that what is in there is healthy um and going to do a better job of of lasting and not having to be replaced as frequently as, as something else might have to so and, and and they're continually upgrading those products. So staying on top of that and being prepared to improve continually is an important part of the Malmsten ethos. This is just investment in quality. But, but I, I feel like the the Malmsten commercial really needs to be. Uh, do you want your entire relay from the Olympics to to pile onto the lane lines and stand up and flex? You can. 
with Malmsten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every every swim coach everywhere that's ever yelled at get off the ley lines. Well, they they can they can stop that unless they're they're trying to make sure that they're they're swimming and not resting on the wall when they shouldn't be. But you know um, that that conversation it, it doesn't make me wince anymore. But I used to I used to you know used to be yelling at the kids all the time get off the lane lines because they they might have broken. But now now I know better. No, we, we, no, we we're not we're not encouraging kids to get on the lane line. They have to earn it. Yeah, exactly. If, if you've just won NC twice, you get up on that lane line and you pump your fist and be happy. That's cool. That's that's worth it. In in terms of it, in ter- you know, Malmsten is is they're they're new to the the U.S. market, and uh, you 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 know you planted your flag in the ground. Uh, but if you're talking to a coach and you're talking to him about price, quality, and price, um, how, how do you feel about your offering? You know, and, and compared to the market right now. I feel really good about our, our price point right now. Um, so we we're committed to holding our price point low. Uh, we're we're not a well recognized brand name yet. We will be. Um, so so because of that, we want to make sure that price isn't a factor in, in deciding to buy us or not buy us. Um, we we know that the quality of our materials is higher and it's worth more. Um, you know, it costs us more to make a lane line, I'm sure, than the other brands that are on the market. But um, we we are, you know, for retail prices compared across the board, we're lower. You might be able to find something on sale for less, but not by much. Even other people's sale prices are going to be perhaps marginally less than ours, but their retail prices are much, much higher than our lane line. You know, did, did a little bit of research. I wanted, I, I wanted to see. And I, that's that's what I found. I wanted to see if if you would uh, s- to see how crystal clear you'd get on that. No, it, it is it is a great value. It's um, it, it's 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 got to be. The, I'm just curious because I have a lot of young people coming out of college, and they're they love swimming. They've all got PhDs. You know, when when you and I finished when we were in our when our twenties, we had a lot of swim knowledge. But I think people want to stay in the sport, and they might not always be a coach. They might not do something else. But it's uh, to me, it 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 feels like you you stepped into a really great a career in quad in aquatics. Yeah, this is this Very, is the place to be. Yeah, this 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 is a fun. So I think that's so when Mike offered me the job or talked to me about it, my my initial reaction was based more upon well, no, well, wow, I've just started something entirely different. But the the I couldn't I could honestly I couldn't stop thinking about it. you know um, you you have a career in aquatics as well and what you get to do all day long is talk to other aquatics professionals that love what they do there's there's nothing there's nothing better than that there's really no bad day at work you, you, you know I mean the first the first couple of months of, of my career, uh, career at Malmsten I'm I'm calling up old swim coaches that I know hey guess what I'm doing now you know so um it, it, and and it, it's fun to talk to to other people that love what they do and there's a lot of passion in swimming it's it's a great life it's a great career and if you're a kid out there you know there 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 are places that you can go um and yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave you with with the parting thoughts because uh, it's it seems like it seems like there's a gravitational force there in Arizona, and it's uh, it, it, some great things are happening. What 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 do you hope to see for the future for Malmsten, ASU? Wow. Um, so for for Malmsten, I believe uh, we're on the right trajectory to be the predominant provider of aquatics equipment, pr- pr- primarily water polo and lane lines here in the U.S. in the near future. Um, the, the product speaks for itself, but I think even more than that, Mike and I are both athletes. Sure, ex-athletes and way overweight, but, you know, we're <laughs> there's an athlete deep down in there as well. We love, we love the sport, but we do know the sport as well. So, um, when somebody calls us up and asks us for a pool for lane lines, we're not just taking that order and hoping we get it right out of the warehouse. We're asking the right questions. We're making sure that uh, we're going to deliver something that is exactly what the customer wanted that fits. And we've thought of the questions. And when I say we, we're relying on 50 years of Malmsten experience to know the right questions to ask. I didn't come up with them there that, you know, we we've had that background where, 
we're leaning on that um, so that when we deliver a product, it's going to be the right thing. And if it's not the right thing, we will make it right. So I do believe that the trajectory of Mountain is to be the leader in this product uh, in the near future. Um, a lot of work to go there yet. There's a lot of people that haven't heard our brain, but, brand, but we will get there. ASU, um, I believe that we are all, they are also on the trajectory to be on top of NC2A swimming. I think men's in the near future. Um, I believe they're capable of winning NC2As next year with who's coming back. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. I wouldn't put money, I wouldn't guarantee it by any means because all kinds of things can go wrong. You get a relay DQ'd and you're done, you know. Um, but I also believe the women's team's on the right path, that they're building up. They're a couple of years behind, perhaps, but I, I watch what they're doing and they're getting stronger and recruiting classes are getting better and the coaching is phenomenal. Um, you know, and I don't want to tell you that the success at ASU is a direct result of the Malmsten Lane Lines, but I'm not not telling you that, so. <laughs> You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.